Hi, this is Jim Tour again, and we're going to talk about the subject of energy. This is on everybody's mind. And what we've got to be able to do is we've got to be able to provide sustainable energy for the future. The problem is, if we run off of purely renewable energies like, like oil, I'm sorry, like wind or solar, it's very tough to survive. We, don't, we can't generate enough from these. Uh, it, Germany tried this experiment over the last 10 years of building lots and lots of wind farms and solar, and it's just not enough. So there's a big pipeline going between uh, being built between Russia and Germany to be able to supply energy to Germany. There was a recent town hall where one of the parties was supposed to come up with their ideas for the future. Uh, none of them came up with any real ideas, no, no technology. They just were critical of everybody else's idea. The amazing thing about oil is that you can put a 14-inch hole in the ground and a huge amount of energy comes out of that, all stored in the carbon-hydrogen bomb. Uh, and so what's done with oil and gas, though, is that you get combustion, you get a lot of CO2 in the air. And because of that CO2 in the air, uh, we're just filling up our, our, our atmosphere with this. Now, one can argue, uh, is it really anthropogenic? Are people the responsible? Uh, is this because of people or is this because of natural effects? At this point, it really doesn't matter anymore. We've got to deal with this politically along with the scientific aspects of this. So wherever you are on this camp, we've got to deal with this problem. But there is a way to use oil and gas, to be able to use natural gas for energy with no CO2 emissions. So let me say that again. Fossil fuels with no CO2 emissions. Fossil fuels with no CO2 emissions. You say, how can that be done? Fossil fuels make CO2 and they, they, they mess up the environment. No, they don't have to. And there's a huge amount of energy already stored, and we can do it with zero CO2 emissions. This is practical, or else you're going to have to be building lots and lots of nuclear plants to sustain us. And, and these nuclear plants, uh, you'd have to build 6,000 of them or something, or some very large number, and nobody wants them in their backyard. You can't have enough wind, you can't have enough solar, and there's intermittency problems with these things. Batteries don't solve anything. Batteries are not an energy source, they're just an energy transfer source, meaning you have to charge up that battery. Well, what do you charge it with? Well, I plug it into the wall. Well, where did that energy come from that came out of the wall, that electrical energy? Usually it came from uh, the burning of natural gas, which spins a turbine and makes electricity, or it'll come from nuclear a small percentage of it will come from wind and solar. You say, well, build, build more wind and solar. Build more, more, more dams and things like that. You can't. There's just not enough uh, uh, that area for us to be able to do this practically. Here's how you can use fossil fuels with no CO2 emission. So right now, what's done is people take methane, CH4, and they combust this with oxygen and they go to CO2 plus water, carbon dioxide and water. So with that carbon dioxide and water, so, so we would have two waters here, this will afford 800 kilojoules per mole of energy, 800 kilojoules per mole of energy. Now that number is, is meaningless to most people, but let, let's, let's think about this for a minute. Just remember that number, we'll, we have that here, and we'll compare it to another number. Another way that you could do this is you could take methane and you could convert it to a carbon solid plus two molecules of hydrogen. This is normal combustion. This is normal combustion. This is not. Normal combustion does this. In doing this, normal combustion will be blowing out 30 billion tons of CO2 per year into the atmosphere. 30 billion tons of CO2 per year into the atmosphere. That's a lot of CO2. If you do this, you're not blowing out any CO2, you're just making hydrogen, and then you take those two hydrogens, you mix them with oxygen from the air, and you make water. Your only product here is water. Only product here is water. There is no CO2 emission. The energy content, these two reactions together, the energy content of this is about minus 400 kilojoules per mole. 
So it's half the energy that you had there. Well, the oil companies will accept this and they'll deal with this because we've got so much natural gas, so much natural gas. In fact, a lot of it is, is even just flare, it's even just sent up into the atmosphere uh, uh, burning because it, you can't release this normally because you, you, just, you just have a, uh, uh, this is a worse greenhouse gas than is CO2 by 7 to 20 times depending on whose number you look at. But uh, here, the only byproduct is water. This is a fuel cell. This is what's done in a fuel cell. So this can be 80% efficient. You can have 80% efficiency in a fuel cell. This combustion, normal combustion, in a car on the highway is only about 25% efficiency. 25% efficiency, I'm, I'm sorry, in town, and about 35 to 40% efficiency on the highway. Why, why is the efficiency so low? Because combustion engines put out a lot of heat. Rather than driving you forward, they put out a lot of heat. It's part of the problem there. Uh, but in, in, a, in a fuel cell, you can have 88% efficiency. So yes, it's, it's thermodynamically half the energy, but you get some of it back because of the efficiency. The problem has been this. That's the elephant in the room. What are you going to do with all of that solid carbon? That's the problem. What do we do with all of that solid carbon? This procedure, was this, this was developed even in the 1950s at 90% efficiency. But what are you going to do with all that solid carbon? Nobody knew. Well, we've got a new process to convert this into a compound called graphene. That's single atomic sheets of graphite. And, and uh, we can make turbostratic graphene that can blend beautifully into a host of different materials that can go into concrete. If you put it into concrete, concrete is 8% of the world CO2 emission comes by the making of concrete because you take metal carbonates, you heat them up to go to metal oxides, you blow out CO2 in the process, and you're heating that furnace up to about 2100 degrees centigrade. Huge amount of energy. Then you're carting that wet material off to a site, very, very heavy, and using all the transportation costs on that and the energy costs uh, to do that. So just concrete is 8% uh, of all CO2 emissions. If you can cut that back by a third because of adding graphene, we've already shown we can add graphene at 0.05 weight percent or even less and get 35% uh, increase in the compressive strength of, con of concrete. And so then you could use one third less concrete. And that's one third savings on that. So all of this works together. Use fossil fuels with no CO2 emissions because we can't get enough from wind and solar. We can use fossil fuels but with no CO2 emission. Now this would take a lot of effort by the oil companies, but they are catching on. There's several big oil companies who understand this, who are buying into this, who are accepting this and saying, hey, this could be a good way to go. Now there's a ton of infrastructure we have around combustion, but this can work. Fuel cell cars have already been made, lots of testing on this. Uh, they have very high pressure hydrogen tanks. You say, well, that's dangerous. Well, not as dangerous as a gasoline tank. Right now, we set our kids on the back seat right over a gasoline tank, which is highly explosive. But there's other methods that are being used now to, to have lower pressure tanks with a hydrogen absorbing material in there. Somebody's going to solve that problem hopefully soon. Hopefully, we'll be able to contribute some to that. But the key was, what are you going to do with all that carbon since we can turn it into graphene now? This is going to be a great way to go for energy. All right, thank you. God bless. And if you like this, please subscribe. It helps me to project this out further. Thanks.